Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Brad and I'm out here on our 20 acres in North Florida that myself and my wife, Deb, are turning into our future homestead. We're doing a lot of the work ourselves. So if you're into tractors and excavators and land maintenance and you like that type of content, consider subscribing because we'd like to see you back. But today's video is gonna be about sharing with you a tool that I use out here on the farm and also that I use on my hunting lease to cut trails and in general, just keep brush back. Now it's a simple tool and it all starts with just a general string trimmer. Now the string trimmer that we have is a steel FS55T. It's an older model, they still make it, but steel makes great products. We're not sponsored by steel out here at Piney Grove, but we're definitely impressed with their products, so we highly recommend them, but it could be any string trimmer that we're talking about. This string trimmer allows attachments, and the attachment that most people are gonna have is your string trimmer attachment. But this attachment can also be transformed by taking off the string trimmer head and putting on an aggressive brush cutting blade and transform this string trimmer into a brush cutting beast that can help you keep your property maintained. So what I'm talking about is this type of attachment. So this is the exact same shaft that the string trimmer is attached to, but I've taken off the guards so that I can run this separately. Now I used to run that brush cutter with these guards, but what I found is when you're into briars and a lot of vines, and that's what you run into on a farm when you're going around fence lines and just trying to keep your property neat, is that there's a lot of vines and briars, and this will get wrapped around there, and it will exhaust you because the blade will cut the vine, but then the vine will wrap around here, and you're just struggling all the time trying to disengage from that vine. So by removing those guards, I have a free spinning blade here. Now I am going to preface this with saying, if you're not comfortable with a blade down around your ankles, you don't think you can handle the power of a string trimmer with a blade on it, then, then don't remove the guards or, or don't even try this because this blade will actually pull itself in the brush. But I've got hundreds of hours of use with this blade or at least with blades like this and I've never cut myself or endangered myself in any way. But again, I just want you to be comfortable and not think that this isn't aggressive because it's a very aggressive cutting tool. So the process for transforming the string trimmer into a brush cutter is very simple. You just take a, a real thin Phillips screwdriver and this is a steel product. I assume most string trimmers out there are the same. I'm pretty sure the shaft diameter and the bolt that goes in the shaft is gonna be the same. But you simply push this into this hole here and there's a little slot inside of here that allows this to stay stationary while you spin off your string trimmer hedge. The threads are reversed, so you just turn it the opposite way. So this way would be to tighten it normally, but that's the way you take it off. So if I turn this, I can spin this head right off. And I'm not gonna take it off because I'm actually gonna take off the blade and show you what you need to do there. So now the actual blade that you put on, and I'll come in tight for this, but this nut and this little spacer won't be part of your string trimmer. So I actually had to buy this from the steel dealer who's also my Kubota dealer. So I went there and bought the kit and I think $50 it came with this blade, which actually has chainsaw like teeth on it. It's very worn because I have a lot of uh, use out of this blade, but you need this nut and this spacer in order to affix this blade. So I'll take this apart and show you. So again, you find that slot in there and that's how that fits in there. If you want a close up of that, just fits in that slot and it keeps this from spinning. And then you use your, Standard chainsaw, it's called a scrunch, screwdriver and wrench. So again, it's left-handed thread, so you tighten it to loosen it. And it's a locking nut, so you'll feel the resistance of the nylon and the knock locking nut. You have the nut, you have this guard, I guess we'll call it. You have this little keeper, and then you have the blade. So the blade is like a one inch diameter hole. And this one, this particular blade, which I love, it's a carbide tipped blade with a whole bunch of teeth that you can't really sharpen, but it's called the Razor Hybrid. And I'll link all of these blades that I have down below in our Amazon store. And you can use our links on Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything more, but if you like this product, you could buy it through the Amazon store on the links below and it'll help out our channel. But this is what the shaft will look like after you remove everything. Okay, so when you're putting this together, you gotta make sure you know which way it turns. And I know that my string trimmer turns this way and an easy way to figure that out. If you have a string trimmer attachment, it's gonna have a cutting edge where it shortens the string as it comes out when you use your bump and go. And as that comes around here, it's gonna hit this edge and cut. So you know that this turns in a counterclockwise position. So knowing that, I know that this turns counterclockwise and this has arrows on it. So I put this on with that right direction. And that makes sense with the or orientation of the teeth. 
and then it fits right on that land right there. You'll see that little land that fits on that one inch circle. Then you have this little beveled washer with teeth on it. That washer goes on. And then this little guard over top of that. And then the nut, which again starts, is left-handed thread, so it starts in the opposite direction that you would think it would. To hold it all together, I'm gonna hold it upside down, spin it till it's in the slot, and then tighten it as if I'm loosening it. Okay, so it's as simple as that to put on a blade on a string trimmer head. So then you take that, put it inside the combi slot here, and you're ready to go. So before we go show you what this thing can do in both grass and brush, I wanna show you the original blade that I got, and this is the steel blade, and it's wore out, and it doesn't have any numbers or any color on it. It's a bunch of chainsaw teeth that are just part of like the skill saw blade, and you sharpen them with the same file that you use on a chainsaw. And the teeth were really long when I started using this, this is probably five or six years old, and now the teeth are, are really small, but you can see they're chainsaw-like teeth. And now another one that I have, and it's called the Forester, and again, I'll link these below. This particular one, it's a nine inch saw chain grass blade. They call it a grass blade, but you can see it has actual chainsaw teeth that are riveted on it. And I haven't used this one yet, but this one is bigger than the one that's on there. So if this one is nine inches, then this one is probably, let's say eight inches. And I don't know that I have enough horsepower with this string trimmer to power this Forester blade, but I bought it and one day I'll use it, but I'm not gonna use it today. But that just shows you that there's many different options you can put on here, but my favorite one so far has been this hybrid blade here with the carbide teeth on it. One thing I wanna mention is that these are very aggressive and they'll let you cut pretty big brush and also trees. So the biggest tree you can cut is gonna be double the size of your blade down here. So. I have cut trees that big around with this blade, but it's not what they're designed for. They're more designed to cut, say, one inch brush. And what I found is with a swinging motion, I can just zip through like one to one and a half inch brush very easily. And then I just keep chopping it up until it's just a bunch of pieces on the ground. But if you come across that occasional two inch tree or so, and you don't wanna bring your chainsaw with you, this one tool will do it all up to a certain extent. Another thing is, is that I don't think these standard string trimmers are probably up to the task of hundreds and hundreds of hours of brush cutting because it puts a lot of stress on the internal shaft in here and the internal shaft on the power head. Just know that you're stressing out the machine a little bit more if you do extensive brush cutting. You might wanna look into more commercial model than maybe the homeowner model that I have here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is show you how this works in grass. Now, these are not necessarily designed for grass. They're more for brush cutting. It's probably better to use your string trimmer in a grass type environment, but these will work in grass. But I would say don't try and do a fence line because this aggressive blade will pull itself into your fence post and scar that. And it'll also cut through your fence wire, which is bad for your fence wire. And it's also bad for the sharpness of your brush cutter blade. Let's crank this up and do a grass demonstration. Okay, you can see it does an okay job with grass. It does get bound up a little bit as far as around the, the head of it, but it cuts it smoothly, cuts it cleanly. So I'd use a string trimmer for areas like around your yard where you wanna be careful of say, slinging into the brick on your house or a tree that you really care about. And I'd save the brush cutting for a brush environment like out here on the farm. So if you're from the South, you know that these things behind me are called dog fennel. I've also heard them referred to as Carolina cedars but they are prevalent here across the South and a string trimmer really won't cut them because they're a very stocky type of weed and a string trimmer will, will rip that off of them, but it won't necessarily cut the stems. Okay, you see that that brush cutter made quick work of the dog fennel and also some dried brush here. Let me give you some close-ups of it in action. But another thing I wanna show 
is how it works like with overhead limbs. So if you own a farm, there's always gonna be the tendency for trees along the edges of the pasture to grow towards the sun. So you're always gonna have these type of overhanging limbs that get in the way of just general access in your property to keep it maintained. So I'm gonna show you how using this rather than a, say a pole saw or a pruning saw, you can get a lot of these limbs real easily. Now what I try to do rather than just going up against it and gently slicing through, I kind of hack at it. I like take a running swing and hit it. And usually you can do like up to two inches and it'll just knock it cleanly off. Now this blade's a little dull, so it takes a little bit more effort, but I'd rather do that than like hold it for a long time and let it saw through. You see how quick and easy that was? Just hit it with a little bit of force and it'll saw right through. So that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I got a lot of grass to mow as you probably saw in the background, but I just wanted to demonstrate how useful this tool is and how you can convert a simple string trimmer into a pretty effective brush cutter. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give us a like at the bottom, subscribe if you haven't already and share with your friends. Also comment below, we'd love to hear from you. But otherwise that's all I've got. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care out there y'all.